Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Be seated. God bless you. And uh, you are welcome to this wonderful service of this year. And those of you viewing online, uh, thank you because God has placed you there for something great to happen in your life. Uh, I've often said what a blessed time to be alive at this time. Blessed time to be alive at this time. You know, uh, knowledge is good. But if you know everything, if you're not matured, it will trouble you the rest of your life. That is why God says the secret things belong to, to him. If you know what is going on, it can really trouble your heart. And I want the church and those of you viewing online, you know, to take this very, very seriously. There are, there are things that I know, things that I know about this country that are so troubling, especially this time. And sometimes you wish you couldn't have heard or know those things. You know, some time ago when they were talking, is it the Ebola thing? I, I think I was in this country already, but, it, but I never heard of anything. It was not anything. Why? Because there was no publicity, serious publicity about it. So, so many people did not know. I didn't know. But what is happening today is that the devil is using the media to publicize a lot of things that are affecting people. And some of those things, many of those things, 99.99, are false. I want us to pray, the church, those of you who are listening, this is not the time to say, okay, I am of this political party, I am that political party. This is the soul of the nation. Because wicked men have planned with their wickedness from hell to destabilize this nation. Because they want their way. We as the church of Jesus Christ have to rise up and say, God, intervene. Because if the church does not rise up and pray, you'll be running from one place to another and hiding yourself. You will not have food to eat. You will struggle for food. But God is showing these things so that we can rise up and stop it. Amen. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Let wickedness be trampled upon. Amen. Let prayers overwhelm the wickedness that the, that the enemy has set in this nation. Many prophets are talking about September to November, September to November, and revealing a lot of things, horrible things, terrible things, and it's not only from one person. It's not only from one person. We had heard it before, and now many prophets, many children of God, God is showing them between now, between September and November, the church has to pray. The church has to pray. The powers of darkness must not prevail in this nation. Let the church rise up. I don't care whether you are, you are from which church. But if you call the name of Jesus Christ, arise and pray and dismantle this. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. It is not time. 
I want all of us, children of God, look at one direction. The direction of God. And you say, God, we don't want this in this nation. We want to break it through prayers. We want to overwhelm it with prayers and destroy it. It will not happen in this nation. Amen? Amen. Let that which the enemy has planned be destroyed. Let it 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 be destroyed. It be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. And let the wicked be brought down. 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 In the name of Jesus. It's not time to talk for Christians. It's time to pray. Else you will find it very difficult to come to church as we are doing like this. Don't say how, how. You know, some were asking, how can the whole world come to a standstill? You have seen it. You have seen it. So when you hear God speak, don't say, how? how? It cannot be. How can that be? And when God shows us as he is doing, these months, which are very, very crucial, he is showing us so that we can pray and reverse it. And do what? Reverse. And reverse it. If you don't love this country, you will not pray. And I pray that God will open the eyes of believers, of Christians all over this nation to know what is going on. To see what is going on. It's not about personalities. Something is cooking up in the spiritual realm that they want to overthrow this country, destroy it. And let me say it clearly to you. It's not about Floyd. It's not about that guy who was killed. That is not it. It's not about that. There's a scheme in the spiritual realm. And that is why things are going from one thing to another. Not more relating to the death of that guy. There's something in the spirit which we have to hold. And say, God, stop it. God, stop it. Have you ever seen a place where they say, defund the police? Defund the police. Will you sleep? The police are doing a great work. Great, great, great work. Even though there can be some few, even though there are few that are not good, but you cannot stop it. Just stop it here. Just stop it here and say, and say okay, no more police. The very gangs will storm your house and kill you and there will be nobody that you are going to call. You call the police, they say, no, come, come in one week's time. So the devil's agenda must be destroyed in this land. Somebody shout hallelujah. I, 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 I am. Listen, brethren. This is going to another level which the church has to pray. I was very embarrassed to hear one mega church pastor, mega church pastor says, if I will see a white man in heaven, then I don't want that heaven. You see how far people have gone. Then, which Bible are we reading? Which Bible are they reading? It's so frightening. There's something happening in the spiritual realm which we must stop. Amen. This is a time, and I call on you, Christians, wherever you are, rise up and go to the throne of Yahweh 
and say, Lord, have mercy. Let the enemy's plan in this nation not work. Destroy it supernaturally. Let those who are behind, Father, bring them down. In the name of Jesus. And somebody shout amen. amen. If we pray, the Bible says God will, God will answer us. Praise the Lord. God will answer us. So, so that is that. You are welcome. Are you happy this morning? Don't allow what you are seeing to trouble you. Uh, the, the enemy plans that that thing should trouble you, but shake it off. Shake it off, shake it off, shake it off, and continue to live your life victoriously in Jesus. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. I want to talk on come and see the works of the Lord. Come and see the works of the Lord. Come on, somebody shout. Come and see the works of the Lord. Psalm 66 verse 5. The Bible says, come and see the works of God. He is awesome in his doing towards the sons of men. In Psalm 107 verse 2, it says, Declare the works of the Lord with rejoicing. This is an invitation. An invitation to the whole world. An invitation to Believers and non-believers by someone who has experienced the hand of God. He says, come and see the works of God. It's not just come and hear the works of God. Come and see the works of God. Come and see what God has done for his people. Come and see what God has done for me. It's an invitation. Human beings so frequently find themselves in situations where they urgently need God's strength and uh, deliverance. When God has given us the victories over our problems, what do we do next? In Psalm 66, it is a hymn of thanksgiving to celebrate God's deliverance of Israel from a severe crisis. Now, the worship leader invited the congregation to recall with him the awesome things God did when they left Egypt, going to the promised land. You remember when they came to the Red Sea? God didn't tell them the, 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 what they were to encounter on the way. But the first test was at the Red Sea. When they came to the Red Sea, they couldn't cross because God had not performed the miracle. Behind them were Pharaoh's army. And so the people now started murmuring and talking ill of their leader. And the Bible says, Moses turned and wept. Of course, I'm not preaching that now. And God told him, go forward. God spoke to him and said, what do you have in your hand? Your, 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 your rod. Stretch it towards the sea. Because today the people are going to see my power. Today something is going to change. They will know that I control the air. I control everything. I control the lands. I control the sea. And Moses did that. And the Bible says, the Red Sea divided itself and the children of Israel went through us on dry ground. That was the miracle. And then after they had done so, 
You know, when they went over, Miriam, the singer, the choir leader, brought out the tambourine and began to sing how God has conquered his enemies. And so here, the worship leader says, come and see what the Lord has done for us. He has opened the Red Sea and we have gone through it as on dry ground. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Every one of us has a Red Sea that we have crossed. And uh, that is the reason why we should call people and say, come, see what the Lord has done for me. See what the Lord has done for me. I came towards the Red Sea, the barrier that was in front of me. I didn't know what to do, but when I called on the Lord, the Lord took away the barrier. My Red Sea was open. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Everything God does for us is to exalt himself. And we have to give him that glory. Knowing that every victory or every blessing we have achieved was not by our own hands. It has been the wondrous hand of God. The Bible says everything we have has been given to us. And the Bible is full of people with great testimonies. People who say God has done great things for us. Amen. Amen. Remember where you came from. We were all captives. We were slaves to sin. The enemy closed us in the prison and took the keys away. And we were groping in the night, wishing somebody could open the door. When I say the enemy kept us in prison, you know what I mean. In the prison of sin, we were slaves. We were asking ourselves, how can we be ever free from this enslavement? We cried day and night. And it seems as if there was no help. But we thank God that one day, Heaven was quiet when God asked a question. Who will go and redeem this, my people, who have been chained and locked up in the prison? Heaven was quiet. Angels could not answer the question. Angels could not volunteer. And then the Son of God, the only son of God, the begotten of God said, I will. I will leave the glory that I have here. The heavenly palaces, the gold palaces, and I will go down to the world of woe. Because these men and women are locked up by the enemy. And I'm going to redeem them. I, 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 I'm going to give the, 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 the price that you a heavenly father wants. You want the blood that is pure. I will offer my blood to release them. I will offer my blood to release them. I don't care the maltreatment, the shame that will be given to me. I don't mind about the humiliation that will come from my creatures. But because of the love that we love them. They have to be free. The enemy was rejoicing. Because there was nobody. There was nobody to redeem you and me. And he thought he had won. But that day. When things changed in heaven. That day. When the question was answered by Jesus. That day. When it was settled that man will be redeemed. Jesus came down. Into the womb of a virgin woman. Oh somebody shout hallelujah. Oh he was carried for nine months. And when the time came. His birth was a wonder. His conception was a wonder. His life was a wonder. And so when he was 
delivered. He kept, he began to, to, to confront the Sanhedrin, the intellectuals of his day, with his wisdom. His wisdom nobody could search. And the Bible says, he went around doing good, healing the sick, casting out demons, preaching the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. There's no sickness that came before him and he didn't heal. Everyone who came to him with sickness, the Bible says he healed all of them. No sickness could withstand his power. And one day, to crown it all because he knew from his birth that he came to die. To give the perfect sacrifice. And then when he was crucified on the cross of Calvary. Ah, he was buried. And down in the grave, he went to the enemy's camp. And said, Satan, can you accuse me of any sin? Can you accuse me of any wrongdoing? Now the keys that were with you. The keys of hell and death that you were holding. You have closed these people up. You have closed humanity up. And then you held the key and no one was free. Now I have made the sacrifice. I have come now to redeem them. And I have come now to take the key. Give me the keys. Give me the keys. You have held people in bondage through death. Give me the keys of hell and death. And the enemy trembling, the devil trembling, gave back the keys of hell and death and said, you are the master. You have paid the price. Your price is, is the highest. Yes, your price is that which I can pay. Take the keys. And then he gave the keys when Jesus took the keys. The Bible says after three days he came back. And before his disciples he said all power. All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Do you know what it means? Do you know what it means? It means if there is any power. If there is any power. That power is under Jesus' control. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. He brought us out. He brought us out. Salvation is the greatest gift. Salvation is the greatest gift to mankind. He said, anyone who believes in me is saved. I have paid the price. Anyone who believes in me will be saved. The door has been opened. And so anyone who believes in me can go out. Listen. This is where we found ourselves. Many of us today, we are shouting because we've gone out of the prison. Through our belief in Jesus. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Yes. So you have something to show forth. Call your neighbors. Call your friends. And you tell them, come and see the works of the Lord in my life. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. My Red Sea has been destroyed. I went through as on dry ground. And now I have a song to sing. I was not singing that song before. Because I was chained. 
I was blind, I was deaf, I was crippled. But today, come, look at me. See what the Lord has done. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now when we were chained, we had no voice. You have no power. You know, when somebody is under, locked, and keyed, your liberty is taken away, isn't it? Listen, I pray that none of us should go to prison except because of Jesus. Because when you get, when you go into prison, your liberty is ceased. That is when you begin to appreciate freedom. It's a bad thing to be locked up. I remember so many years, so many years. One time I was detained in Cameroon. Not for any fault of mine. Well, you know, there, there was this, uh, there was rioting after a football club, which I love so much. They denied them the victory. And so there was rioting in the town. I was with my friend, uh, Dr. Billy, we were coming from somewhere in the night. And then we saw people running and police. Uh -uh. We just ran because <laughs> when you see people running, you have to run also. So, so as we ran, I jumped into the pit toilet. You see, I was standing inside. There was no other door to go through. And so my friend Billy went through and stood, and stood somewhere. So the police came now and broke the door of the toilet and got me from it. It was in the night. And they dragged me that day. I was wearing, you know, my, my white, you know, cute. With high shoes. You know, they used to call it Mbariga shoes. So, yeah. Yeah, Salamander. So, so they took us, they bundled all of us. Can you imagine? They bundled all of us into the cell. My clothes were all dirty. Everything. When we were in the cell, we could not sleep. Because it was too narrow. You want to pee, you pee just there. It was terrible. I said to myself, what am I doing here? And then, uh, the following day, they said, okay, uh, the woman whose house or something like that was destroyed, she will come and identify the people. And you know, we had to, I had to pray personally. Because somebody could come and say, you are the one, when you are not ready, the one. And so she came and, then uh, you know, called different people. That is when they said, okay, you are free. You can go. Can you imagine? You know, in those days, I, I came out. There was no taxi. There was no vehicle to take me to my house. With all the dirtiness, with white, I was walking home. And it was about one mile. So that day I know what freedom, how freedom is good, is important. So you can see how we were chained. We had no freedom to choose how we want to live. But Jesus gave us the victory. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. So we have the, the right to call our people and say, come and see this life that was shattered. Come and see this, this man who was useless, this man who was helpless, this man who was just a religious being, not knowing God. Come and see what the Lord has done. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. You remember the Samaritan woman by the well which uh, Jacob dug in, um, in John chapter 4 verse 28 to 29. Jesus was passing through Jericho, you know, to Galilee. When he came to that well, the, the disciples had gone to town and Jesus was there. And this woman came to fetch for water. And then Jesus engaged her in a conversation. Woman, give me water to drink. 
And the woman said, you know, it, it all went out from religion to political. No, I can't give you water. You are a Jew, I am a Samaritan. Okay, the people said we will worship here and worship on that mountain. and So, so the conversation went on. And then she finally said, okay, I want to give the water. Jesus said, go. Call your husband. She said, I don't have any husband. Then Jesus said, true. You are right. Because even the fifth one that you are with is not your husband. She was like, wow. Are you the prophet? Are you the prophet? Are you the prophet? And then Jesus revealed many, many more things. And she said, and then Jesus said, I am. This woman met the prophet, the Messiah. Are you the Messiah? Jesus said, yes. You finally met the desire of all ages. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says this woman threw down her jug and ran back to the town and called the people and said, come. Come and see the one who has told me everything about myself. Come. That is the invitation every one of us should be giving to our relations, to our colleagues, to every person that we meet. Come and see. And the Bible says the whole town came out and said, let's go and see. Who is this that has told the woman about all her life? And when they came to Jesus, Jesus preached and many of them believed. It was at the invitation of who? That woman who said, come and see. That is what we should be doing. Come and see what this God has done for me. Somebody shout hallelujah. You remember another guy too was Paul. Paul was a persecutor of the church taking care of the place his clothes on the feet of Paul who was by then called Saul and so Saul persecuted the Christians and saw that it was good and he took orders to go to um, to where? to Damascus to get more Christians and on his way to Damascus, you know, two things always happen. When you, are, when you are persecuting the Lord, something will always happen. Paul was coming. Jesus was coming. When the two of them met, when the two of them met, they, there was a power clash. There was a power clash and the lower power bows. Ah, before Paul knew what was happening, he was on the floor. You cannot meet God and stand up. Let me tell you, you are just haughty for nothing. <laughs> you are just famous here on earth that people bow before you. When you meet the living God, you will be the one to bow. You will be the one to bow and you will be speechless. And when he was on the ground, he said, <laughs> Lord, who are you? Who are you? And Jesus said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. You cannot kick against the priest. He said, Lord, what do you want me to do? This is somebody who was going to kill the followers of Jesus. When he met Jesus, Jesus said, okay, Jesus told him, what to do uh, and uh, and told him go to the street and uh, and nurse is going to pray for you and your eyes will be open and that is what he did he went and he was prayed for his eyes were open and the bible said and he and straight away he started preaching christ his his change was so radical and he also was preaching a radical gospel that is why he was persecuted. Everywhere, everywhere Paul went, he called the people 
By the miracles he did. By the message of salvation he gave. He said come. And see. What God has done. You are seeing a persecutor. A former persecutor. Come. Let me tell you my story. You have a story. I say you have a story. The Lord has done something to you. That wants you to go to the public. And tell them come. I have a story. This is not how I was. I was not this way before. Listen, the enemy may say, but you are still falling, you are still doing this, blah, 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 blah. You tell the enemy or you tell whosoever. I said, if you knew my story, if you knew where I was coming from, I'm still a walking project. I, if, if I am still this way today, what of the time that I was not? Then I would I, I was terrible. The God who has changed my life, and I'm still struggling with some things. Just imagine if that God did not change my life. I would be more, I would be some something else. It's like it's like I read a story. It's like the story I read. This pastor was so much against this brother because, you see, the brother was not really like walking the way of the gospel. There were things going on in his life that were not, you, you know, commended. And so, this, this pastor went to God and said, look, I want to deal away with this guy. And God asked him and said, do you know where he's coming from? Do you know what I've done in his life before he is the way he is now? You have a story. You've got to call somebody and say, come. See what the Lord has done for me. Look at the River of Life Assemblies International. Many people have received their deliverance here. Many people have received their healing here. Many people have received miracles here. It is your place to go out and say, come and see what the Lord has done for us. Somebody shout hallelujah. Some have received children. Some have received promotion. Some have received a change of life. Miracles upon miracles in this place. And God says, go. Tell the people what I have done. Declare what I have done. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. You remember the, the, the madman of Gadarin? When Jesus met him, he was living in the tombs. He was chained. And nobody could pass through that way because of the demonic forces that were in his life. And when Jesus met him and then delivered him, Something happened in the life of that man. Immediately the demons left. The man was in his right senses. And then the people of that region came. Instead of saying Jesus. Continue with his good work. They said leave our region. Leave our region. And then the Bible says. Uh, the story is in Mark chapter 5. Then. This man said. I want to follow you Jesus. I want to follow you in the boat and go with you. Jesus said, no. Somebody said, no. no. Come on, somebody said, no. 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 Jesus said, but go home to your friends. Tell them what the Lord has done for you. How the Lord has had mercy on you. Do you have a close mouth? The Lord has done so much for you. And God says, go home. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors what the Lord has done for you. The Bible says he went home. And he went to Decapolis, 10 cities, and publicized his story. God has done much to you. 
you keep a, a sealed lip, more miracles will not come. Because as you continue to testify of the goodness of the Almighty God, good things begin to happen. More and more. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. I told you some time ago, I was a stutterer. I was a stutterer. I was a stammerer. I was born with that. And so when God called me to go preach, I said to God, you are calling me to go preach? I am a stammerer. If I begin to pronounce your word, for example, Psalm 66 verse 5 says, Come and see the works of God. And I begin to say, oh, My God is so powerful. My God is so great. He has healed the sick. He has raised the dead. And then I begin to read and say, Come, 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 come. And see, 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 see the work, 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 work of God. <laughs> Will they not turn around and say, hey, uh, Physician. Physician, heal yourself first. Heal yourself. That is exactly what I said to God. That is exactly what I said to God. I, I said, Lord, it will be difficult for me. So, loose my tongue. Heal me. I don't know how God did it. But Jesus did it. Jesus did it. My parents were surprised. My fellow students in the Bible school were surprised. Even when I came to the States, I remember one of our friends said, but you used to stammer. I said, yes, I used to stammer. But Jesus, oh, somebody, but Jesus, but Jesus, Jesus did it. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I remember we went with my wife to one crusade when we were still in Cameroon in Manfield. That crusade, miracles happened. People were falling left and right and vomiting and shouting. Demons were leaving people. And um, after I gave my testimony, I gave this testimony of my deliverance. After we finished that crusade about about two months or three months or four months after that, we were in Boya, in Cameroon, again for another crusade. We had sung together with, uh, with Pastor Billy, and as I was leaving the hall, somebody grabbed me by my shirt. I was like, how do you grip a clergyman in that way? What happens? And the guy looked at me and said, I've been looking for you for all this months. I said, what? He said, when you came to, uh, to Manfe in Cameroon and you spoke your testimony, you gave the testimony of how the Lord delivered you from stuttering. I was in the crowd and uh, I was also a stutterer. I was also a stammerer. And I said, God, what you did to Reverend Follow, do it also for me. And he said, God took it away. So I've been looking forward to seeing you so that I can tell you this testimony. That is what testimonies can do. That is why you need to call people and say, come, see what the Lord has done for me. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Let me go faster because I'm about to end. That is what Jesus does. Amen. That's what Jesus does. The blind man, the blind man in John chapter 9 verse 25, this man met Jesus. He was blind and uh, Jesus healed him. He, Jesus sent him to the, uh, to, uh, to the pool of Siloam and said, go wash your face and be healed. He went and washed his face and he was healed. And then the Sanhedrin were not happy. The church, in quotes, was not happy. They called him and said, you say, what happened to you? Tell us. When they spoke to him, they wanted him to deny his testimony. Never you deny your testimony. Wherever you are, let your testimony be in your mouth. Because that testimony is going to save somebody. There's somebody waiting to hear 
what God has done in your life in order to be saved. And this is uh, the man's uh, testimony. In verse 11, he said, a man called Jesus, a man called Jesus. He didn't even know Jesus. He said, a man called Jesus, made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I have received my sight. Whether he is a sinner or not, all what I know is that my eyes have been open. A testimony. You see, people can't deny a miracle that happened before their eyes. A testimony does not need correct articulation. The great works of God are evident. You don't need articulation, you know, grammar, all those type of things to say what God has done. Just simply tell the people, come. I was this. I was suffering from this. Jesus healed me. That is all that is needed. And the miracle will be done. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you what, 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 a wife a husband that is a testimony now you walk and then you hold your wife as I hold my own and you tell the people this is a gift from God to me she is a blessing to me come and see the works of God. Ah, uh, it is by grace that I am married to her. It's by grace that she is married to me. Your husband, your wife is a gift from God. There are some people who want to hear your testimony of what the Lord did to you. God bless you. Listen, some of us had very difficult moments before marriage. You ask this one, she refused. Ask this one, she refused. Ask that one. A lot of things happen. Then God finally gave you one. God is saying, call the people and say, come and see. Come and see. I stayed without a husband for a long time, but now, come on. Come and see. Come and see what the Lord has done. Because you sought the kingdom of God. Uh, some of us have children. Uh, they were so difficult, you know, to get. But you had them. So you can call the people and say, come and see what the Lord has done for me. I was barren for many years. And now see the children. They are here. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Look at I tried all means. I went to native doctors. We did all kind of things. And there were no children coming forth. But the Lord God of heaven. Heard my prayers. Come. When you give your testimony to somebody. Who is barren. Who is struggling to have children. Something is triggered in the spiritual realm. And in the heart of that person. If. And that person will say. If God could do this to her. To him. He can also do it for for me, that is a testimony. Don't hide. Tell somebody, don't hide your testimony. Mm -hmm. You have a good home. You have a, a, a good home. It was given by God. You have money. It was given by God. <laughs> it is not a bad thing to tell somebody, you know what? I am not poor. Do you hear me? Come on. Do you hear me? Yeah. It is not a bad thing to tell somebody, I am not poor. I'm not poor. That your testimony is going to inspire somebody who always thinks that he or she cannot get out of poverty. But when they hear that, wow, this guy always confesses, I am not poor. Something Something would happen. You see, I have good health. I have protection. 
I will not die before my time. The Lord has delivered me from here, delivered me from there. When you give those, those kind of testimony, you are saying, come. Come and hear what the Lord has said. The doctor said, the doctor said, my illness was terminal. But God stepped in. So, so I am here to, to call you to come. Come and hear what God did to me. That is, that is what pleases the Lord. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah, that's what pleases the Lord. I will not, I will not finish the message. I mean, it's a long message. How many of you have been delivered from death? You know, you know that this is, the enemy meant this, to destroy me. But you saw the hand of God. When you have received such deliverance, God says, call the people. Call the people and say, come and see. What? The works. Come and see the works of God. In my life. Is somebody hearing me? So God is giving you an assignment. God is giving you what? An assignment. Seek ye first the kingdom. When we testify the great works of God, God glorifies himself. Amen? Amen? God glorifies himself. How many of us know that the Lord has protected us? <laughs> yes, I see so many hands. The Lord has protected us. The Bible says no evil shall befall you. He has protected you from lions. You know when the enemy sentenced you to death, for destruction, but God delivered you. Call your neighbors. Call your family. Call the rest of the people and say, please, come and see what the Lord has done for me. Amen. Remember how miraculous he provided for you. There's a brother in the church here. Somebody came to to repair something in his house. And the Lord spoke to him to bless that person. And um, he went and took his checkbook. And the Lord told him what to write. He wrote a thousand dollars and gave to that person. But before giving to that person, God had given him a word of knowledge of, of what that person was going through. And he prayed. God healed that person that very time. And then God again spoke to him. Asked him any other problem and so on. She said about her rents. Not even believing. This is somebody they don't even know. How much is your rent? And then the brother went and wrote 1,100, if I'm not mistaken. This woman started to cry. That is somebody who just came to repair things in the house. You don't know the person. You don't know where she's coming from. He writes $1,000. $1,100. And said, take. Do you think that woman will ever forget S somebody you don't know. She didn't know this ch child of God. And this child of God didn't know her. I wrote the thing and said, okay, I bless you, go. That was saying, come and see. Wherever this woman will go to, one day, I am sure one day this woman may come to the church here because that which was done was above her thinking. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. I have been blessed, you know. I've been blessed financially. I have to bless other people. By blessing other people, you are saying, come and see 
I'm not a poor man. I'm not a selfish man. I'm not a strange, uh, 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 what? A, a stingy man. Okay, let me end here. It's just, it just, it just too much. When we testify the great works of God, glory goes to God. The people will know that God still performs miracles today. Uh, many people will turn to the Lord. And also your testimony will stand as judgment to all those who refuse to believe. In return, God will bless you in ways you never expected. Remember, when you testify, the enemy won't steal your miracle because he is not the one who gave it to you in the first place. God will watch your back. Amen. Remember to give the testimony. Remember to give the testimony to the glory of God. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about him. So when you want to testify and, the, and you hear a voice say, ah, don't do it. That is pride. If you testify, it's pride. Tell the devil I'm not testifying for myself. There's somebody who needs this testimony. Oh, somebody needs your testimony in order to be wealthy. Somebody needs your testimony to, to, to be healed. Somebody needs your testimony for his house to be in order. Somebody needs your testimony for their marriages to be healed. Somebody needs your testimony for their children to be blessed. Don't hide what God has done for you. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. I could not finish the message, but this is where we're ending. I have a testimony. When I testify, it is not pride. It's not pride. You give one testimony after the other. You are doing that, giving the glory to God, and then somebody would hear and say, if God could do this to minister for them, he can also do it for me. If God can do it to Zebedee, he can also do it for me. If God could heal Pastor Beatrice, he can also heal me. And all these things will come because of testimony. Don't hide. Tell somebody, don't hide. Don't hide what the Lord has done for you. And those of you viewing, don't hide what the Lord has done for you. If the enemy says, ah, don't, don't, don't testify because uh, that, that is pride. Do you want to show that God is using you and so on? Tell the devil, sit down. Sit down and keep quiet. What God has done for me cannot be hidden. Cannot be hid. I will testify. And you go ahead and testify. Because your testimony will bring healing to somebody. Your testimony will bring wealth to somebody. Your testimony will bring salvation to somebody. Your testimony will bring calmness to someone's storm in life. This is what the Lord says you should do. Go and do it. And the Lord will be with you. The Lord will watch your back. And you will see how many people that will come to Jesus because of your testimony. Don't hide it. It's too big. It's too big to be hid. It is inside. Let it burst out. Tell somebody, let it burst out. Let it burst out. Come on, come on, come on. Let it burst out. Let it burst out. And don't be afraid. Because when you give that testimony, God will watch your back. When the enemy wants to use it in another way, God, to whom you are giving all the glory, is going to change it. And you will be blessed. Your family will be blessed. Your job will be blessed. Your life will be blessed. Your marriage will be blessed. Anything that you lay your hands on will be blessed. May you be blessed in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah.